great information on Amanda. So um, currently, Amanda is the marketing director for ECM Solutions. So they're the largest privately owned independent insurance agency in the Carolinas, and they're located here in Charlotte. So she basically runs their marketing department, including all social media, inbound marketing, graphic design, branding, PR, and event management. So I don't know when you sleep, just by that description, <laughs> but then there's more. Um, well, before that, she worked as a digital producer for W. SOC TV, Channel 9 News. She also has her own social media consulting business, which is Roxy Digital Group. She is also the co-founder of Social Road Trip, a movement that helps, co it helps connect people who are online contacts into like a face-to-face -face environment. And then this other stuff I did not know, so I'm just <laughs> going to say it because I think it's really cool. So she enjoys improv acting and um, currently is doing stuff at the, with the Charlotte Comedy Theater. And she also runs a successful travel Instagram account with over 30,000 followers documenting her global travels. So it's amazing. So much <laughs> it's great. Okay, thanks for having me. Um, so nice to meet everyone. My name is Amanda, and thank you so much for giving me this opportunity, Kim, to be here. Um, I know that a lot of you guys are interested in learning about marketing and communications and kind of that route, um, where to go with your career and how to make the most of that. And so I'm here to just kind of tell you my story and, and kind of where I got to where I am today and then also kind of show you as well some of the things that I'm doing both in my job and then also outside of my job. But in summary, I am a marketer and marketing is my first and foremost passion. I live it, eat it, breathe it, sleep it. I just, I cannot get enough of marketing, but it's really the aspect of building relationships that is why I love marketing so much and face-to-face -face interaction. Um, and that's also how I was able to start these side projects slash businesses is just because that's just who I am as a person. I'm, I'm just a marketer. Um, so I'm going to tell you kind of where I got to where I am today and how I was able to do that. It started off, I was in college at Elon University and I graduated in 2011. My major was strategic communications and I thought originally that I wanted to go into public relations. So I took a job, the first job that I got was in a public relations agency in Boston, um, which is where I'm from originally. And I really quickly learned that PR was not for me. It was, um, I thought it was going to be very glamorous and kind of like the nightclubs and the celebrity aspect of it. And in reality, it was nothing like that at all. Um, and it, it just kind of made me realize I have a creative drive and I have a passion for, um, you know, really interfacing with people and, and taking relationships to the next level. And I knew that in public relations where I was, I wasn't going to be able to do that. So I started dabbling in social media. And I ended up starting my own business because I couldn't find a job right away. It was really challenging to graduate from school and to um, you know, have all the competition in the world that are applying for the same jobs. And what was really frustrating for me was I would get to the third or even the fourth round of interviews multiple times. They would even fly me out sometimes and I wouldn't get the job. And it was really discouraging me to the point of this had been going on for months and I said, you know, I've got to do something about it. And my dad's an entrepreneur, and he actually was the one who gave me the idea to start my own business. And he said, if you can't start, if you can't find a job doing what you love to do and what you're good at, why don't you just start it and be your own boss? And, and that's what he does, and so he could kind of guide me through it. He said, you just graduated with this skill set of um, you know, graphic design and marketing and you know exactly what you're doing but really you're trying to prove to other companies why they should hire you why not just have your own conglomerate and and make a hundred percent of the revenue instead of just a small cut of it so I thought that was a really interesting thought and approach not a lot of my peers would have ever thought to do something like that and that's how Roxy Digital Group was born Literally, Roxy was the name of my dog, <laughs> so I just made this up, like, one day, I just thought, what's well, going to be catchy, like, my little dog, cool, no one knows to this day. People actually think that my name's Roxy, and what's funny is I live out my brand, and in all of my jobs, people call me Roxy, like, even to this day. You'll see people in Charlotte, hey, Roxy, what's up? 
it's just like a no-brainer for me. It's like my alter ego or something. But it's kind of funny because not a lot of people who know me on social media know that my name's actually Amanda. But anyway, it is. So <laughs> Roxy Digital Group was doing well, and well in the sense that I had no idea what I was doing. I had no idea how to run a business. I knew that I was good <laughs> at certain things, but also marketing and, and PR, as I learned, is a lot of just um, elaborating and fluff. And it's just making yourself sound nice and presentable and relatable. And if you can have those aspects and characteristics you can really trick people into buying your product and you can, you know, have, close the sale that way. And so I learned very quickly that it's all about word of mouth and it's about how you come off and, and what you say you're an expert in. So showing your expertise. And I ended up landing some major biopharma pharmaceutical writing company that I knew nothing about biopharma and to this day I still don't really know what I was even doing but I ended up blogging for them. I probably shouldn't be telling you that but whatever I mean it's true I really had no idea and no clue um, so I was blogging for them and what this is how I started to realize that I knew how to market was even though I did not know a thing about biopharma research and companies what I did was I took the top journals online, I read some of their content, which was very boring, and I repurposed it into like more relatable, fun things that people can actually understand and break it down. Because I'm a marketer, I'm not a pharmacist, I'm not a bio person, so I just basically took what they had there and rewrote it, put, our, put my client's logo on there, put his information, started a blog post, and then we started getting contacted by Hootsuite. And we started getting contacted by other people that wanted to read this and started retweeting us and we started getting Twitter followers and it's like now we're all of a sudden a thought leader and I have no idea what I'm doing this whole time. <laughs> so it was really just like a crazy ride um, of Roxy. Then I started getting into the health and wellness industries. They like massage therapists wanted me to start marketing their, their massages and then um, I had some restaurants and some frozen yogurt places that wanted me to, to market theirs. So I started coming up with all of these strategic campaigns to get more people on their social media sites, on their websites, and really, again, not a clue what I was doing, but it was just like kind of you're going along and you're seeing what works and you're seeing what doesn't. And that's a really big takeaway that I learned is you're going to go into jobs and you're going to go into situations clueless. But if you can be confident and you can know exactly who you are and show that you're comfortable doing whatever comes your way, cool, calm, and collected, then you're going to rock marketing. Like, this is literally all it is. So that's like some advice to you guys just starting out. Really don't worry about, about what's thrown your way. As long as you can kind of keep your composure and, and act like you know exactly what you're doing, then it will all work out fine. And what's funny is that that's how it got me to Charlotte. I was actually discovered, my website was found by WSOC TV, the ABC news station here in Charlotte. And I had never heard of, of WSOC TV, but I was desperate for a real job. Because I knew that Roxy Digital was great and I was making revenue, but at the same time, I knew that I also wanted a more of an opportunity and I wanted benefits and I wanted a culture and I wanted more young people around me. You know, sitting at home all day working is great, but there are pros and cons to that too. So I took the opportunity, they flew me down for an interview, um, and two weeks later I was down in Charlotte, permanently. So I've been down here for about three years now, um, maybe even a little longer, and I was at WSOC managing all of their social media platforms. They've actually never had anyone do that before, so I was kind of paving the way, and again, had a lot of things throw at, thrown at me, and it was the kind of thing where I just had to take it all and process it and say, all right, here's my best, how I would, what I would do for, you know, Facebook. My, here's my best strategy and my best approach for that. So that's kind of what I ended up doing at Channel 9, but the role evolved more into like a web reporter role where I started to write stories um, and use my journalism background as well into kind of culminating into just a role that has never happened before at that ABC station. And it was really interesting, but I stayed there for two years because I thought it would give me great experience and good exposure, which it did, but my end game was never journalism. 
my end game was always going to be marketing. Um, and I knew that this would help me get there. So I took the job that even though I knew it wasn't my dream job and I knew it wasn't glamorous or anything like that, I knew it would help build my resume, build my credentials, and then my experience as well. And if you can show an employer that you're with someone for about two years or so, I think that says a lot. Um, you know, it's better than just a, a year or even a few months. If you can show a little bit of longevity with a company, then that will really help you like in your future career. So I was then discovered on LinkedIn, which is just like kind of a funny pattern, like people kind of just discovering me via social media. But I was very active on LinkedIn, kind of looking for another opportunity. And um, ECM Solutions, I had never heard of them. I actually had no idea what they even did. Their website was pretty terrible. So I went on their website and I thought, I don't even know what they're doing, but I'm just going in for the interview anyway, and I'm just going to do it because why not? It's an opportunity, and, and I'll see what, what they are. I didn't even know they sold insurance. It didn't make it clear on their website. <laughs> so that goes to say, you really need to hire me because I can help you with that. They didn't have a message. They didn't have branding, anything like that. And the interview ended up being more of an informal conversation with my boss, who's now my boss. Um, and I really liked that. It was not like spotlights on you, you know, there's so many other candidates and asking me really odd questions that I don't know the answers to. And so I took the job and I've been there for, my two year anniversary is coming up actually in like three weeks. So almost two years now. And again, this job, they've never had a marketer in this position before. So it was me, again, coming in, brand new, paving the way. And on my very first day, my boss goes, here's a whiteboard marker, here's a whiteboard, and what are you going to do for us? Like, he literally just said, start writing what, what you're going to do for us. I said, okay. <laughs> first of all, we need a new logo. We need a new message. We need a new website. You know, we need some social media. We need content. We need marketing materials. There was so much going on that how could one person possibly take on this entire role? But he, we mapped out the entire year and we stuck to deadlines and we stuck to, you know, this is going to get done, how, how this is going to get done, so strategic plans. And we ended up checking off every single one of them. Like right now, we're starting up a new bucket list for next year. So it's the kind of thing where you think this is impossible, how you can take this on yourself, but really you can. And you just have to be confident that you can. And if you need help, you should ask for it. There have been times where I thought that I could do something, but I can't, and I, or I need a clarification. Um, and I have no problem walking right into my boss's office, even if he's in a meeting and saying, I need your help. Or even if he's on vacation, calling him, I need your help. So that's great about the open communication part. 